Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NoobCoder.com. Welcome back to part two of my tutorial series on building a type racer clone. So within this video, we're gonna be covering the mongoose portion. We're gonna be going over a quote API and we're gonna do a little front end stuff with React. All right, so we're gonna start off with the mongoose portion. So I'm just gonna bring up the package explorer and we're gonna create our mongoose model. So I'm gonna right click new folder, we're gonna call this models, and we're gonna create a file called game. Okay, so now from here, what we're gonna do is require mongoose. Next, what we're gonna do is create two schemas. So the first schema we're gonna create is the player schema. And the first property we're gonna define is the current word index. So current word index is gonna be of type number. And we're gonna default it to zero. So what current word index does is it keeps track of what word the user is on. So we're gonna have an array of words. By default, you start at index zero because that's how arrays work. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna define socket ID, and this is gonna be of type string. Now, socket ID, if you've ever worked with socket IO, every socket has a unique identifier. So we're gonna keep track of this so we could use this on the front end. Next, we're gonna define is party leader, and we are going to set that to a Boolean and we are gonna default this to false. Now, what set party leader is for is when a user creates a game, he is the party leader. So that user can start the game. If you're not a party leader, that means I don't want you to be able to start the game. So that's what that's for. Next, we're gonna define words per minute. And this is obviously gonna be a number. And we are gonna default this to the value of minus one. And this is just for us internally. By setting it to minus one, it lets us know that we haven't calculated the words per minute for this user yet. And next, every user is gonna have a nickname. So this is gonna be of type string. Okay. And now we're gonna create our game schema. All right, so the first property we're gonna define for our game is gonna be the words array. So this is gonna be an array of type string. Okay, so if you've noticed here, current word index, we start at index zero. We're gonna use that to access the words within this array, okay? And I just forgot a semicolon here. Next, what we're gonna do is we need a Boolean. So we're gonna set it to is open. And this is gonna let us know whether or not players are allowed to join the game or not. So this is gonna be of type Boolean. And we're gonna default this to true. So when a user creates a game, everyone's allowed to join the game if they have the code. Next, we are gonna copy this, save some typing. And we are going to call this is over. And we are going to default this to false. So this is going to keep track of whether or not the game is officially over or not. So we're going to set that to false as the default. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to have a players array. So this is pretty self-explanatory. This is going to contain all the players within our game. So we're going to pass in the player schema that we created. And the last property we are gonna define is called start time. And this is gonna be a number. So what we're gonna use start time for is we need to know when the game started in order for us to be able to calculate the words per minute. So once the user finishes typing, we'll get an end time 
And with our start time and end time, we'll be able to calculate words per minute from there. Next, what we're gonna do is we're all done. So we are just gonna export this. I'm gonna give it a name of game. And we're gonna pass in our game schema. Okay, so let's save this and we are officially done with the mongoose portion. So now let's just require it in our app.js file. And there we go. So now what I wanna do is move on and we're gonna work with a quote API. So let's save this for now. And we're gonna open the package explorer. We're gonna create a new file called quotable API. Okay, so now obviously working with an API, we need to install a new package so we can actually make requests. So we're gonna bring up the package explorer, clear the terminal, and I'm going to use Axios. Okay. All right. So let's get rid of this. Let's bring that out. And first thing we're going to do is let's actually require it. And now let's actually look at the documentation that we're going to use. So this is the API that we're gonna use. You can see here, Quotable is a free and open source quotations API. So we have over 2000 quotes, 900 authors. So I'm using this API because I wanna generate a random sentence or sentences so that our players could type out. Okay, so it says, look here for servers. We have staging, we have production. We're gonna use the production. And this is the endpoint that we wanna hit. So this is gonna return a single random quote from the database. And I didn't mess with any of the query parameters. If you wanna mess with that, that's fine. But we need this and we need this. So I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna remember that this is random, okay? So we'll get rid of that for now. And we need to make our endpoint. So I'll say const URI. We'll say HTTP. We'll paste that link there. So that's our endpoint. And we also want to hit the random part. Next, what we're going to do is let us actually export a function so that we could use within our app.js file. So we're going to say module.exports. I'm going to call this get data. And now what we want to do is we're going to return a promise. So we're going to use Axios to make a request to that URL. We're going to say dot get, pass it in. Then we're going to call then, and we should get back a response. So first, let's go back to the documentation, see what kind of response that we're going to get. So they give us a sample response. So ID, content, author, length, text. We're only interested in the content. So this is the quotation text. So we wanna access the content portion. Let's get rid of that once more. And to access that, we're gonna say response.data. Then we go into content. So content is the actual quote. Now, this is not exactly what we want. What we want is an array of words. We don't want it as a full string. So what we can do is call the split method and pass a delimiter of space. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna take that string and it's gonna break each of the words into its own individual index within our array, which is exactly what we want when we created our mongoose game object. So, this looks good, except that I am missing a P here. Should it be HTTP. All right, so now let's save this. And we're gonna go back to our app.js file and we are just gonna require this in here. So I'm just gonna say const quotable API 
and we are going to require that file. All right, so now let's save this and we are actually going to move on to the front end portion now. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, let's go to the package explorer. We're going to go to client is I am going to add bootstrap. So we need to find the public folder index.html. And what we're going to do is if you go to bootstrap, it'll give you a link to where you can install it. So all I'm going to do is copy the CSS portion. So get that out of the way. And we are going to paste this here. And what I'm also going to do is our root div. I'm going to add a class of container. Okay, so we can save that, get rid of this. And now I'm going to just delete a lot of the stuff that comes with creating the React app. All right, so first we're going to go to our index.js file. We are going to delete this file because we're not importing that. We'll delete our service worker import and we will get rid of this. All right, all done with our index.js file. So let's save this. We're going to go to our app.js file. We're going to delete line two and three. Not using it. So let's save this. And we're going to come back to this file in just a second. And now what I want to do is we're actually going to delete the files that we removed the imports for. So let's come up here and we'll go to app index CSS, the test, logo, service worker, setup test. And I think these are all the files we're going to delete. So let's delete them. So now what I want to do is set up our routes and set up our first component. So we are actually going to delete all of this. And we are going to open up the terminal. We're going to clear it. And we are going to install React Router. Okay, so now let's close this and let's import what we need. So we're going to say import and we are going to pull out from the React router. We're going to pull out router. We're going to pull out route and we are going to pull out switch. Okay, I just want to explain this. This is router. Usually you would pull out browser router and then you would say browser router as router. But I'm using router because I'm going to use the history object outside of where you normally would be able to use it. So again, I'll show you how all this works in a second. So speaking of which, I'm going to create the history file now. So we're going to go within our source folder, right click, new file, and I just called it history. Okay, first we're going to import and we are going to pull out create browser history. And this is going to be from our history package. So our history package is, I believe it's installed when you install the React router. So you don't have to worry about that. Next, we're going to create our history object. So we're just going to say cons history. And we're going to say create browser history. All right, this is going to give us our history object. And all we need to do is export this so we could use this. Okay, so now let's save this. Let us go and import it. And now I'll show you guys how you could use this. So let's create some space here. So we're going to use our router. And what we can do is pass a prop called history. And we could use the history object we just created. Next, we're going to use the switch route. 
And now all we need to do is put our routes within here. So the only route that we're going to create for now is the home page, basically. So we're going to give it a component to render out of game menu. Now we haven't created this yet, but that's OK. So now let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go to the source folder. We are going to right click new folder and we are going to call this components. And we are going to create a new file called game menu. OK, let's close this for now and I actually made a small typo. It should be game menu, not menus. There we go. Game menu, close that. And now I'm going to be using functional components. So let's create this component. And let's export this. OK, so let's save this. And let us actually import. I'm going to be using hooks. So I'm going to be using the use history hook. This is available through the React router package. And we are just going to say let history equal to use history. And now we have access to the history object. We are going to return what we want to display. And basically, this is just a menu saying, do you want to create a game or do you want to join a game? So that's all we're doing here. So I'm going to create a div, give it a class name, and I want the text to be centered. Next, we'll give it a h1. We'll say, welcome to type racer clone and we're going to need two buttons so with the first button we want to create a game so i'm just going to say on click and we'll pass in a function and all we're going to do is say history dot push and this is where we're going to go so we're going to go to game slash create. So that's for creating a game. So next, I'm going to go to the next line because I don't want to run out of space. And we are going to give it a class name of primary. So we're using bootstrap classes here. And let's make it large. And I'm going to need some space on the right hand side. So we're going to pass in MR3. OK, and this button is just going to say create game. Uh, let's give it a space here. OK, so to save some typing, let's copy this. Let's paste it. And this time, instead of game create, what we're going to do is we are going to join a game. So that's where we're going to go. And we'll change this to join game. And I'm just going to remove this because we don't need space. So let's save this. And what we can do is let us import this here. So we'll say import game menu from and it should be in our components folder. OK, so now let's actually run this. So first, let's clear this and we need to go inside of our client folder. Next, we need to run the start script. OK, so here we go. Cannot find file history.js does not match corresponding name. OK, so Let's go to our history.js file. Let's take a look at this. And this should be lowercase, shouldn't be capital. So let's save this. And there we go. 
So obviously these buttons aren't going to work because we haven't set up the routes for them. But it takes us to game slash create, which is what we want. And this takes us to game slash join. OK, so this is where I'm going to leave off at. And we are going to be using our Mongoose stuff and the API that we worked with earlier within this tutorial within, I believe, the next video. So I'll see you guys there.